Okay. this year to have a lot of books that have to do with music. So let's see what we have. Lots of books. We're going to start with the tiniest of the grandchildren. Who would that be? That would be Gavin and Everett. And they, since they're twins, they're going to learn to share a lot of things. So I thought they could share this book today. And it is called Knick Knack Patty Whack. Have you ever heard that song? Because again, we're talking about music. This is a song called This Old Man. And this is a fun book, Gavin and Everett. Maybe you can get Finnegan to help you. Because you'll notice there's the little man in the pages. And you can get him to move around and do things. You see that? So I'm just going to read or sing the words for you. This old man, he played one. He played knick-knack on my thumb with a knick-knack paddy-whack. Give the dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played too. He played knick-knack on my shoe. Do you see him? He's playing knick-knack on the shoe. With a knick-knack paddy-whack, give the dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played three. He played a knick-knack on my knee. Whoa, there he is! With a knick-knack paddy-whack, give the dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played four. He played knick-knack on my door. Oh, there he is. With a knick-knack, patty whack, give that dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. And he keeps rolling. Look at that. This old man, he played five. He played a knick-knack on my hive. With a knick-knack, patty whack, give the dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. There he is under there in the hive. This old man, he played six. He played knick-knack on my sticks with a knick-knack, a patty wacky, give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. See the stick? Gavin and Everett, are you liking this book? What comes after six? Does Finnegan know? Finnegan, what comes after six? Seven. This old man, he played seven. He played knick-knack up to heaven with a knick-knack paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played eight. He played knick-knack on my gate with a knick-knack paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. This old man, he played nine. He played knick-knack on my spine with a knick-knack paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. He's rolling home. This old man, he played ten. He'll play knick-knack once again with a knick-knack paddywhack. Give a dog a bone. This old man came rolling home. So Gavin and Everett, I hope you like this book. It's really fun. Now let's see what we would have for the next one in line. Who would that be? Mr. Owen. Owen's almost two years old. And this is a song called, I Know an Old Fellow Who Swallowed a Cello. Now maybe you know that song, I Know an Old Woman Who Swallowed a Fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll... This one is about a man that swallowed a cello, and it shows a lot of different instruments in the orchestra. So, Owen, maybe you can learn about a lot of the different instruments. I bet you already know violin, since Andrew plays the violin. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cello. 
I don't know why he swallowed that cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a harp, not so sharp to swallow a harp. He swallowed the harp to join with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. So he swallowed the cello and the harp already. What's he going to do next? I know a shy fellow who swallowed a sax. Hard to relax when you swallow a sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the cello. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed that cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a fiddle. No time to twiddle when you swallow a fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. So how many instruments has he swallowed already, Owen? A lot. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cymbal. Not so nimble to swallow a cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. But I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. Hmm. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a flute. That was a hoot to swallow a flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. And I don't know why he swallowed that cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a kazoo. Andrew, you have a kazoo, don't you? Strange thing to do to swallow a kazoo. He swallowed the kazoo to jam with the flute. He swallowed the flute to jam with the cymbal. He swallowed the cymbal to jam with the fiddle. He swallowed the fiddle to jam with the sax. He swallowed the sax to jam with the harp. He swallowed the harp to jam with the cello. I don't know why he swallowed the cello. Perhaps he'll bellow. I know a shy fellow who swallowed a bell. Teeniest, tiniest, petite cat's a bell. His belly, it wriggled, his belly did shake, it rumbled and tumbled, it quivered and quaked, it ticked and it rolled, it swelled and it swelled, and all on account of that wee little bell. He belched and he burped and he turned shades of yellow. It seemed he was doomed, that very shy fellow. He weaved and he wallowed, he stomped and he yelled. And the next thing he knew, out jingled the bell. Out buzzed the kazoo, out tooted the flute, out crashed the cymbal, that noisy galoot. Out flashed the fiddle, out sizzled the sax, out strummed the harp, and he played to the max. Oh, it's noisy. Well, he bellowed that fellow, that fellow did bellow. Ooh-wee. And last but not least, out cha cha the cello. So everything came back out. The end. So, oh, and I hope you have a good time with that book and you can learn a lot about those instruments. Put down here. Now, who do we think is next? We're going from the littlest to the biggest. Hmm. Hi, Shy Asia. Shy Asia, this is a little book that is about a song that you probably already know. Do you know? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You know that book, Shy Asia? Well, this book is called Twinkle, Twinkle, Time for Bed. So this is a good book you can take with you when it's time to go to sleep and you can relax. Twinkle, twinkle, time for bed, time to rest your sleepy head. Such a busy day is done, friends and games were so much fun. 
A bedtime story feels just right. One more kiss, sleep tight, good night. Isn't that a good, good night song? I really like it, so I hope you like your book. And now, Mr. Finnegan, we have a book for you, and this one is called Tubby the Tuba. Have you ever seen a tuba? They're big and shiny, and they play low notes like this. Boom, 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 boom. So let's see what happens with Tubby the Tuba. Oh, and this book has a CD in the back. So you can also have Mommy or Daddy play the CD and listen to the sounds of the different instruments that Tubby and his friends play. Once upon a time, there was an orchestra, which was all busy tuning up. First, the oboe gave his A note to the strings, to the woodwinds, and the brass. Let's give him an A note. tune up to the A, and then the up and down the scales, helter-skelter, faster and faster. Oh, but Tubby the tuba, a fat little tuba, puffing away, but oh, so slow. Oh, what lovely music, thought Tubby, and he sighed. <sighs> Here, what's the matter, said Peepo the piccolo. Oh, said Tubby, every time we do a new piece, you all get such pretty melodies to play, and I never, never a pretty melody. But, people said, people never write melodies for tubas. It just isn't done. Oh, there's a conductor. Shh. The conductor tapped his baton and the instruments began to play. First the violins danced a lovely tune on their strings. Then they cried with flute, catch! Got it, said the flute. My turn, said the trumpet. The rest joined in the cello, the oboe, and the bassoon, while Tubby went Catch me, cried the little tune. Catch me, got you, said Tubby. Oh, you're sitting on me, said the little tune. Poor Tubby picked up the flat little tune and tried to squeeze it back into shape. He couldn't play the little tune. Oh, you clumsy fool, snapped the violins. I'm sorry, Mr. Fiddle, said Tubby. Fiddle? Wow! And the violins quivered with great indignation. You will please address us as violins. Fiddles, indeed. Tubby, said the conductor. Tubby, what is the matter? Please, sir, I thought it would be so nice to dance with the pretty little tune instead of going oompa, oompa all the time. Dance, laughed the violins. Dance? Well, really, the French horn quietly put his hand to his mouth and smiled, and the whole orchestra began to laugh. <laughs> Stop it, cried the conductor. Stop it, I said. Tubby. Please, sir, said Tubby. I wasn't laughing. Tubby. Rehearsal was over and Tubby was walking home with Peepo the piccolo. Please, Peepo, said Tubby, I just feel so bad. I don't think I want any company. I understand, said Peepo. Good night. Good night, said Tubby. The moon was out and Tubby went to the river and sat down on the log. And he looked at himself in the water and he began to sing. Alone am I, me and I together. If I went away from me, how unhappy I would be. Me and I, oh my. So, the trees whispered in the wind. The waterfalls tinkled. And an old hoot owl hooted. Suddenly, a big bullfrog hopped out of the water and sat down beside Tubby. <coughs> coughed the frog. Bugup, bugup, lovely evening. Bugup, I said. Beautiful evening. Hello, bugup, hello, bugup, hello. 
the tiny just said. Oh well, said the frog, oh well, if I'm not wanted, jump back into the water. Oh, said Tubby, please, Mr. Frog, come back. I didn't mean to be impolite. Back hopped the frog. Oh, that's all right, said the frog. I'm used to it. No one pays any attention to me either. Really, said Tubby. Why, of course. Every night I sit here and sing my heart out. But does anyone listen to me? No. Can you sing? asked Tubby. Can I sing, said the frog. Listen. The frog started to sing a most beautiful melody. Oh, that's lovely, said Tubby. You try it, said the frog. Oh, thank you, said Tubby. And he began to play. Say, you're a very nice little tuba, said the frog. Tubby, you should try that melody out with your orchestra sometime. Oh, I will, said Tubby. Goodbye, Mr. Frog. And off Tubby went, as happy and happy as could be. Hmm, said the frog. Most appreciative audience that I've ever had. Fine musician, that tuba. Bug up, bug up. Lovely evening. Bug up, bug up. Good night. The next day, the orchestra was busy tuning up for the rehearsal and buzzing with excitement over the arrival of the great new conductor, Signor Pizzicato. Tubby practiced his oompa and smiled to himself. People the piccolo caught his eye. Feeling better? Uh-huh, winked Tubby. I wonder what he's going to do with the new conductor. Here he comes, called the French horn. Here comes Signor Pizzicato. Signor Pizzicato bowed to the orchestra and raised his baton. All right, he said, begin. And Tubby began to play his own little melody. Oh, that wretched tuba, snapped the violins. He'll disgrace us. The trombone snuck, stuck out his tongue. And the trumpet snickered. Tubby, said Senior Pizzicato. Tubby, I've never heard a tuba play a melody before. Let's hear the rest of it. Oh, said Tubby, here's my chance. And he played with all his heart. I think he played the song that the frog taught him. Don't you? Why, how perfectly wonderful, murmured the strings. Please, Tubby, may we sing your tune too? How about me, cried the xylophone, and me, said the trombone. May I, said the celeste. Here I come, said people, and they all played Tubby's melody. Well, we've done it, haven't we, Tubby? It was the bullfrog sitting right beside him. We have our points too, don't we? And oh. How happy I am. And that's the story of Tubby the Tuba. Hi, Shikovan. Grandma's got another book about music for you, and it is called Zin Zin, a Violin. And you might know that your cousin Andrew is learning to play the violin, and Aunt Trisha plays the violin. So you might have to have them show you how they play the violin sometime. Let's see. This is all about going to hear an orchestra concert. You ever heard an orchestra concert before? It's pretty cool. We're starting out with the trombone. The mournful moan in silking tone, itself alone comes one trombone. Gliding, sliding, high notes go low. One trombone is playing solo. Solo means one instrument at a time. Next, a trumpet comes along and sings and strings and swinging a song. It joins trombone no more alone. One and two, and now they're a duo. It's called a duet when you have two instruments playing together. Fine French horn, its valves all oiled, bright and brassy loops all coiled, golden yellow joins its fellows. Two, now three-o. -oh. What a trio. French horn, I like the French horn, it's kind of mellow. Now a mellow friend, the cello, neck extended, bows a hello. End pin set upon the floor, it makes a quartet. Now that's four. Do you see the cello? Cool. It's kind of like a violin, only a little bigger. And soaring high and moving in with zin, zin, zin in a violin. Stroking strings that come alive, now quintet. Let's count them. Five. Now we have the violin. 
What do you think is going to come next? One, two, three, four, five, maybe six. Flute that sends our soul a shiver, flute that slender silver sliver, a place among the set it picks to make a young sextet. That's six. With steely keys that softly click, its breezy notes so darkly slick, a sleek black woody clarinet, it's number seven now. Gleeful, bleeding, sobbing, pleading, through its throbbing, double reading oboe. Please don't hesitate. Come, make it an octet. That's eight. See the lady playing the oboe? Cool. That lazy clown, the big bassoon, he plays down low. We're laughing soon. Here, Grumpy, get your place in line and give us a nonette. That's nine. The harp descends with angel's wings, a heaven blend through magic strings, and when it joins the others, then behold, a chamber group of ten. The orchestra comes in the hall. They're on the stage. We see them all, the cello, harp, and clarinet, the trumpet, whom we've also met, the oboe, flute, and big bassoon, all eager to get started soon. Trombone, French horn, and violin, all poised and ready. Now begin. Just making up an orchestra. The strings all soar, the reeds implore, the brasses roar with notes galore. It's music that we all adore. It's what we go to concerts for. The minutes fly. The music ends, and so goodbye to all our new friends. And when they've bowed and left the floor, if we clap loud and shout, Encore! They may come back and play once more. Can you shout, Encore! Encore! That's how we get the musicians to come back. And that would give us great delight before we say a late good night. Good night, orchestra. Hi, Andrew. I know you're reading a lot already, so I got you a book that I think you can read all the words yourself. It's a chapter book, actually. So, and it's called Penny and Her Song. So again, it's also about music. Let's see what Penny does. Penny came home from school with a song. Listen, Mama, said Penny. It's my very own song. Penny started to sing. One is nice. Your song is beautiful, said Mama, but you will wake up all the babies. Shh. So Penny looked for Papa. Listen, Papa, said Penny, it's my very own song. And Penny started to sing. One is nice, two is nice. Your song is wonderful, said Papa, but the babies are asleep. So Penny went to her room and shut the door, and Penny started to sing. One is nice, two is nice, there is even better. Penny stopped. She wanted someone to listen to her. Penny sang to herself in the mirror, but that didn't work. Penny sang to her glass animals, but that did not work either. Penny made faces at herself in the mirror. Do you ever make faces at yourself? Then she moved her glass animals around the top of her dresser. She almost forgot about her song. Chapter two. And you know what, Andrew? I'm not gonna read you chapter two because I know you can read it yourself and you can figure out what happened to Penny and her song. Hey Sequavion, I've got you a book and it's also about music and it's about a boy named Max who found two sticks. What do you think he might do with the two sticks? Let's find out. Max and his two sticks. I'll show you the picture and then I need to turn the book around to read the words. It was a day when Max didn't feel like talking to anyone. He just sat on his front steps and watched the clouds gather in the sky. See, now front steps. 
A strong breeze shook the tree in front of his house, and Max saw two heavy sticks fall to the ground. What are you going to do with those sticks? Max's grandpa asked as he watched from the front window. Not saying a word, Max tapped on his thighs. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pat pat. His rhythm imitated the sound of the pigeons starting to fly. When Max's mother came home carrying new hats for his twin sisters, she asked, What are you doing with Grandpa's cleaning bucket, son? And Max responded by patting the bucket. Tap, 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 tap. tap. Hmm. Tippity tip, tap, tap, tippity tip, tap, tap. He created a rhythm of the light rain falling against the front windows. Very nice. After a while, the clouds moved on and the sun appeared, and Cindy, Sean, and Jamal showed up with drinking sodas. Showed up drinking sodas. Hey, Max, what you doing with those hat boxes? And again, Max didn't answer. He just played on the boxes. Dum, 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 Max is learning a lot about rhythm. Dum, 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 dum. Max drummed the beat of the Tom Toms in a marching band. What are you up to with those soda bottles? His dad asked as he brought out the garbage cans on his way to work. And Max answered on the bottles. Cool sounds. His music joined the chiming of the bells in the church around the corner. Soon the twins came out to show off their new hats. Hey Max, they said, what are you doing with those garbage cans? And Max hammered out a reply on the cans. Ching, clang, bang, cling, clang, da bang, cling, clang, da bang. Sounds pretty nice. A cling, clang, da bang. Max pounded out the sound of the wheels thundering down the tracks under the train on which his father worked as a conductor. Training. Suddenly, Max heard thump de thump thump de de thump as a marching band rounded the corner. Thump de de thump thump de de thump. There he was playing on his garbage can with his two sticks. Max watched the drummers with amazement as they passed, copying their rhythms. The last drummer saw Max, and then with a nod and a wink, he tossed Max his spare set of sticks. Max now has his very own drumsticks. Cool. Thanks, called Max, and he didn't miss a beat. And that's the story of Max. He found two sticks. Hi, Ethan. I know you've been learning a lot about music in the last few years, and now you're taking drum lessons. This book is called Can You Hear It? And it puts a bunch of classical music together with neat pictures from the art museums so that you can learn how to really listen to the music and hear the music paint pictures. So with the book, there is a CD. And so you'll want to put this CD in your CD player when you have time. And you may only do, want to do one song at a time and listen and look at the picture and read the questions and see if you can hear the things they're asking. So I'm not going to read you the whole book. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. The first two pages talk to you and your mom and dad about what the book is doing. And then they introduce a lot of the different instruments and the sounds that you might be hearing. So they have the woodwinds, the string instruments, the brass instruments, the percussion instruments. And then, when you start using the CD, this is number one. It's a song called Flight of the Bumblebees. Have you ever heard it? Kind of sounds like that one better. So you play the music, 
and you read these questions and it says, can you hear the bee hovering above the flower played by the violins using the no lower notes? So you listen to see if you can hear the sounds that make the bee. Or then can you hear the bee flying again, but with the nectar and playing with the clarinets? So that's what you try to do. Number two is you try to listen and hear a skater. Number three, you listen and you try to hear passing cars in the music. Number four, you're going to listen for fish. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this, and I'm going to ask you later, maybe if you can pick out your songs that were your favorites and which ones you could hear, the pictures that the music was painting, and maybe which ones you had trouble figuring out. And we'll have some fun with that. I also got you another book called the big book of boy stuff. So I can't read it because it's only for boys. So you'll have to read it and maybe you can share with Shine Savante and Ethan and or Andrew and uh, Finnegan what's in this book about boy stuff. And maybe Grandpa, he'd probably like to know. Hi Shy. as you know I'm doing books about music this year and so I found this one for you that I think you'll think is pretty funny. It's called The Remarkable Farkle McBride. It's not a super hard book. It does have some interesting words in it, but it's one that maybe you can also read to your younger brothers and sister. So I'm going to read it to you. And then I also have another book for you that's called Guys Write for Guys Read. And this one I think you'll enjoy also. And again, it's for guys, so Grandma can't really read it. So you'll have to tell Grandpa all about what's in here. But this is the remarkable Farkle McBride. Hear what he does in his life. It's pretty crazy. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. So he was three and he played the violin. He went riddle dee dee deedle deedle dee dee with all of the strings at his side. riddle dee deedle dee deedle dee dee the remarkable. Farkle McBride. Now that was when he was three. Very teeny guy. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more in spite of his parents beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore and he smashed up his rosin and ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bow to the living room floor and he shouted, enough of your screeching. So he was done when he turned four with the violin. But when he was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. Now, Shy, I think maybe you're mastering the flute this year. So maybe you can uh, kind of relate to Farkle McBride. He went, rootle tee tootle too with all the winds at his side. rootle tee tootle too the remarkable Farkle McBride. So he played the flute in the orchestra. But at six, Farkle flung his flute to the lake, notwithstanding its lyrical trill. He stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and wimpy and shrill. So he stopped playing the flute. But when Farkle was seven, a different sound, he rekindled his musical flame. He began the most expert trombonist around and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went vroom, petty doom, petty doom, petty doom, with all the brass at his side. Vroom, petty doom, petty doom, petty doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. So now he's playing the trombone. So he's played what? The violin, the flute, the trombone. What do you think he's gonna do next? Well, you can about guess. When he was eight, he declared to his parents' despair and to everyone else who might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with this blast and this blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear, so return it or throw it away, I don't care. I despise it, just like all the rest. So he stopped playing the trombone, but when Fargo was nine, both his father and mom were birthed bursting with pride and affection for Farkle and xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussionist section. He went boom, bash, clam a clash, and clamor he could provide, tinkly, bing bong, bumpity crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. So now he's a percussionist. 
But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume, and then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed, the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang and the battery. Poor Farkle at ten, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sounds, musicians playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace me, young Fargo was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat. Kaboom, the foundations were shaken. By glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went riddledy, rudely, vroom, biddy, bang, bravo, all the spectators cried. Deedly, doodly, doom, pity, clang, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings. The remarkable Farkles at last. Dante, we've been doing books this year about music, and I know you're turning into quite a musician with your percussion, and then also you can play the piano some. So I thought you might enjoy this book called Ah Music. And again, this is something that you can also read to your siblings and maybe just spend some time learning some things that you didn't know about music. So I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because there's really a lot in here, although it looks like a small book. There is a table of contents here that lists all the different things that are in here. There's a history of music, a thing about jazz, what pitch and tone, things that make up music. So it starts out very simply with music as sound. If you hum a tune, play an instrument, or clap a rhythm, you're making music. Or you could be listening to it too. But it talks about music as rhythm. And especially as a percussionist, you know about rhythm. But it talks about what we feel, a steady beat, a pulse sort of a heartbeat behind all music. And the music is also melody. It's that key line that we hear in our heads or that we hum uh, that goes with a song. Pitch and tone, highs and lows, and something that's harsh or deep or mellow. Um, music is volume because it can be loud, forte, or fortissimo, or it can be soft. It also talks about music as feeling, which is why we love it so, because it can really express how we feel. Um, when I was a teenager and I used to practice the piano, and I'd be playing, and Grandpa Trap would go, stop banging on the piano, and I would say, I am not banging, I am practicing. But I was expressing my feelings, and so music is a really good way to sort of emote and get our feelings out. Music is creative, and just like I know you like to draw, you're an artist, but music, you can create your own music or express yourself creatively through music. And then music is also written down. So this book has a little bit about how music is written down. It's really a foreign language. It's a different language um, to learn to write and read music. Um, creation comes to life. It talks here about a lot of people, how music has grown, about where the orchestra comes from, all the different instruments in the orchestra. Uh, later, it talks about the different types of music and musical history and the composers. And again, I'm not going to read all that. Dance and different kinds of movement to music. Um, cultural music in different countries. Again, the history of music and all the famous composers of music and how that's grown. And uh, music through the ages, the diversity of music, how it can express different people's um, cultures and countries and different instruments that way. Here's a whole section on the birth of jazz, which I thought you would really like um, to look at. And you can see it's almost like um, cartoons, the drawings in here. And so I thought that you would really, it even talks about music as therapy. So I hope that you can spend some time finding all the different things that are in this book, because I'm not going to read them all to you.
And I also got you a guy's read book. So just like Ethan and Shy, you have some things that I can't read. Because for guys only. So I hope you enjoy that. And then to go along with your drawing and maybe learning to draw uh, comic characters, I got you some of the Marvel Spectacular comics so that you can read them, enjoy them, and also maybe see how they're drawn. So I hope you enjoy all of these, Savante. And before I'm finished with our Grandma Reads this year, I have a surprise for all of you. Surprise! I know you all know that I play the piano and I sing, but did you know that I could also play the guitar? A little bit. So I have a song to finish up this Grandma Reads. 2012 DVD all about music and it's called Grannies in the Cellar and it talks about this grandma down in the basement cooking some food but apparently she's got a cold and she's sniffing a lot so maybe you'll like this song Grannies in the Cellar Oh Grannies in the Cellar goodness can't you smell her cooking on that dirty greasy stove is some matter that keeps dripping in the batter and she whistles as it runs down her nose down her nose down her nose and she whistles as it runs down her nose in her eye there is some matter that keeps dripping in the batter and she whistles as it runs down her 